Hey everybody, welcome to episode three of our Project Mark V build. Okay, so today we're actually going to be installing uh, the rest of the parts for the most part that make up the externals on the engine itself. In episode two, we actually said that we were going to be installing the turbo, we actually lied. Uh, today we're gonna be going through oil pan, coils, spark plugs, as well as all the other parts you see here, including the injectors. Um, and then Cody's gonna be talking about the turbo a little bit. Yeah, we're gonna get this GTX 3076 installed. We've gotta get it on there, we've gotta get it clocked. We've got our uh, GTX series turbo with the billet compressor wheel, which is both lighter and has a better aerodynamic profile, which helps it make more power. Uh, we've got a stainless steel tile exhaust housing, V-bands on both sides, which is a gasketless exhaust fitting, and our stainless steel tubular manifold and tile wastegate, all of that has to be spun and oriented in the right directions to fit on the engine and interface with each other. Also, this turbo is uh, able to flow up to about 650 horsepower. Uh, we have that also uh, with our RS4 injectors. This obviously will give us the ability to put the fuel into the engine to make the power we need. So let's get into our install. All right, we're here on the bottom of the engine. We are actually gonna get this all sealed up. We have our oil pump in place. Again, this is our 1.8T setup, and we're just gonna install our oil pump pickup. There's a seal here that we just wanna oil, uh, put a little bit of oil on it real quick. It's clean, so it allows this to uh, slide in place a lot easier, because this seal is gonna be a little bit tight. So you can kind of just wiggle it in place, and we'll put our two bolts in. So with our oil pump pickup, this is actually going to be, there's a screen inside here. Oftentimes what will happen is some vehicles will have issues with sludging or picking up uh, contaminants that are in the engine. This would often get stuck in the screen. And uh, part of the reason why you want to change the oil regularly, obviously, is to prevent that and make sure that this doesn't get clogged up because that will mean that you would have no more oil pressure at all. All right, so we're actually going to put our oil pan in place. We're not going to be permanently putting in there, mostly because we don't have our rear main seal mounted in place, and it does seal against the rear main seal here. So what you would do in, when installing an oil pan is put RTV all the way around, and then you're gonna mount it in place like so. And then you can throw your bolts in. And obviously this one has a nice custom uh, shaved rear side of the oil pan. Now we're gonna install our exhaust manifold gasket. and our turbo manifold. Okay, so while Cody's finishing up tightening the exhaust manifold bolts, uh, just wanna let him kinda give you a brief explanation. The factory manifold would actually be cast and this one is tubular. So he's gonna go into talk a little bit about why tubular manifolds are better than a cast one. You might come from the factory. So these tubular manifolds have much larger runners, can flow more air than the factory cast manifold. In addition to the collector being individual for each cylinder where the cast manifold kind of thumps them all into one place at the same time, this has a nice merge to it with a smooth transition so you get smoother flow of the gas pulses from each cylinder getting to the turbo which will help spool and help our flow for top end. This manifold also features the V-band which is a nice gasketless fitting, really really convenient to use and even uh, Volkswagen Audi now uses these on their newer engines. And of course, the takeoff for the external wastegate, which we need for this to be able to uh, control our boost pressure properly. Okay, now we're going to install our turbo. Again, we're gonna put it up to the V-band, get that seated in place, and then get the V-band in place. And Cody can snug that up. And as he does so, it'll pull the turbo onto the manifold. So now that we've got the turbocharger installed onto the manifold, we need to clock it correctly. So that means this center section here, this is the oil drain fitting for the oil to leave the turbo. Here's one of our coolant fittings. There's another one on the other side and our oil feed fitting that's on the top. The oil drain fitting needs to be uh, pretty much level, as close as we can possibly get to it being level when it's installed in the car. Uh, the engine's not quite the perfect angle on the engine stand, so we're estimating for now and you can readjust it later. And then we tighten up these nuts here to lock the 
exhaust housing onto the center section. And then our compressor section of the turbo also needs to be clocked so that we get the outlet in the right direction. So now we can rotate that into place approximately there. Again, that's probably going to need to be readjusted once it's all in the car, but we can get it really close and then tighten these bolts in order to lock that in place. All right, now we're going to install this fitting. This is actually gives you the ability to uh, install the an AN line on the crankcase vapors. This would be for installing a catch can or some other crankcase vapors. This is from Integrated uh, and is specifically designed for this setup. Okay, so here we have our injectors. This is our factory injector that uh, we removed. Here are our RS4 ones. We're actually going to take uh, the seal kits that you would use for installing injectors, install them on our RS4 injectors, again, that flow uh, higher flow rates to allow us to fuel this big turbo build properly. Uh, we're going to install them in the manifold and then install the manifold into the, onto the engine. All right, just one quick thing before we install this manifold. I wanted to talk about this, uh, this relief valve here. This is actually uh, what some people call a, a crack valve. This actually relieves the amount of pressure coming out of the rail and will limit that. So um, this is an RS4 one, which uh, we'll link to, but a lot of people upgrade this to prevent uh, more fuel from flowing out of the rail. This will raise your rail pressure, which is good, obviously, if you have uh, tuning and fueling issues, you want to get as much fuel as possible. Okay, as we install our manifold in place, again, the injectors are already in place. We get the lower mounting studs in place, and then we're going to get all this slid into the engine. We, now we're going to install our studs. Uh, we have blue Loctite on this, and if you're not familiar with this, we actually have a video where we talk about a DIY in-car uh, showing you how to check your cam follower and then uh, install these studs in the vehicle. So we're just going to go ahead and thread them in place. And again, we're using blue thread locker to ensure that they won't come back out on us. Now we are going to install our cam follower. Uh, we're going to be putting a little bit of assembly lube on that because this engine has been apart for quite a while and we want to make sure that everything is lubricated pretty good. So we're going to install that cam follower. And if you're not familiar, obviously this is a wear issue on these engines, which is part of the reason why these stud kits are good. And we're going to install that in place and then install our nuts. So if you're not familiar, you would want to check your cam follower, probably depending on use of the car, maybe every 10, 15, or 20,000 miles. All right, so Cody's tightening our studs in place. We have mechanical lock nuts on these. This particular fuel pump is an upgraded one. You would need to, when doing a build like this, upgrade your high pressure fuel pump. Uh, we have them available from Integrated. They have a few different options. You can either rebuild your original one or purchase a complete new one uh, for, uh, to, as a replacement unit for if you had a bad pump or didn't want to rebuild yours. Now we're going to install our spark plugs and we are using BKR 7 EIX plugs in this particular engine. And we're going to install our four plugs. Now we're going to pop in our Audi R8 ignition coils. Thank you for watching episode three of our project mark five build on our next episode we're going to be installing a wave track differential and factory steel shift forks in our transmission to strengthen it be sure to subscribe to check out our next episode do you want to do a repeater do you want to do a repeater good does that box look weird there? It doesn't look normal. <laughs> there we go.